no matter how negative you've been for the past month or a year um, or whatever. It's never too late until you haven't done it, until you die, right? So that was the first thing that sort of juxtaposed my thoughts, my theory from practice. And the second thing, um, I got some other stuff here that I'm just going to skip in the interest of time. Um, but uh, Grandma had watched my grandfather die, and he had all kinds of surgeries and whatnot. Uh, and she had decided that she was just going to do hospice. And, um, if she couldn't eat, drink, breathe, and she was going to be comfortable, and then she was going to go. And one of the things that this my great Catholic family did was they were there all the time, and they did they called three different priests in on four different occasions to do the last rites. And uh, so, you know, in my atheist mind, my first thing was like, well, this is, this is kind of silly because it's not, well, number one, for anyone who doesn't know about last rites, it's got like a three-step process. So this is a lady who can't talk, she can't really, she can see out of one eye, but she can't really respond. So the first thing is penance. And I thought, well, that's kind of silly. Um, she can't do penance. And she's been to confession every week for the last, like, 75 years. So, um... <laughs> You know, it's a questionable value. The second thing is an anointment with sacramental oil. Um, now, the fourth time, I, you know, she may, maybe she could smell it, maybe. Um, but, you know, it's supposed to strengthen the sick person, and I didn't really see a lot of that. And then finally, there's a communion. And again, she couldn't eat, she couldn't drink, so. And, and the whole thing is sort of robotic. He's a priest that she doesn't know. And uh, it was read out of a little leather book. And uh, it was the same each time, all four times. And I thought, well, this is, you know, sort of devoid of meaning. It's silly, and why are we doing this? It's probably pain. And, um, that was my theory. But the practice of a lifelong Catholic, and this is my last point, but uh, is that that's what the ritual is all about. It's about doing the same thing you did before, and your ancestors went back as far as you care to imagine you did before. And I don't think that it really matters what they said or did in that time. The whole idea is that it's a ritual. And if you drop the veneer, the understood veneer of sort of this guilt and obligation that may be involved with certain Catholic things, and this, you know, this, the presence of a Holy Spirit if there is one, and, and you know, that I, the ritual still has value as long as the person is there. Um, you know, if I allow myself to go into a spaceship into my grandmother's imagination, I, it was almost like, it was almost like I could imagine for her, it might have been like, um, like Anton Ego eating the ratatouille that Remy prepared. That sort of reverse zoom back to previous time, to childhood memories and maybe even leapfrogging back to other people's similar experiences when they were passing. And so it caused me not, not to want to be Catholic, but, but uh, to uh, understand that a little bit better than I may have understood it before. And the other thing it did is it filled the awkward silence that occupies the room of the dying person. Um, you know, and it also not only filled the silence, but it filled the room because people came that may not otherwise have come. And so, uh, so it caused me to understand a little bit better than I had understood before why we were doing that. And I was really glad to go. And uh, we had a lot of good stories about grandmother's uh, Smuggling days in Prohibition. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> uh, chili eating champ of South Omaha. Oh. Not kidding. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, those things wouldn't have come to light, at least not to me. I didn't know. So, uh, anyway, that's all I had to say. A little bit different theory and practice of what, uh, what we went through. So, thanks.